I'm Nicola Poli, CEO of HSBC here in Luxembourg, and it's my pleasure to welcome Nazir Zubairi, CEO of the Luxembourg House of Financial Technology to the ESG Square. Today we're going to talk a bit about uh, the role of the loft and the role of fintechs in ESG. Welcome, by the way. Well, thank you, Nicola. It's great to be here. It's a pleasure having you. Uh, could you start off by just telling us a little bit about how you see the role of financial technology fintechs and also the loft in uh, ESG and sustainable finance in general? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, technology is an, ena an enabler for financial services on the whole, and I think increasingly so people are seeing its value in the sector of ESG. Um, with all the rules and reporting, it's almost a green field for technology to, to start off and and make sure that the sector as a whole is effective and efficient. Uh, we're seeing that with, the, say, the use of tokenization um, for the issuance of green bonds or the use of uh, sort of carbon neutral credits for new bank accounts that are being opened at certain fintech uh, neobanks in the US. Um, we as the Loft, we as part of concentrating on the broad ecosystem within Luxembourg, um, obviously see this as a key component as Luxembourg emphasizes ESG and its future growth and activity. And we want to be there to hold hands with the financial institutions and help it develop. You mentioned uh, quite a few things, tokenization, uh, reporting. You've also mentioned a few of the neobanks in, in the US. What do you think are the major opportunities for fintech in Europe and specifically in, in Luxembourg? Well, I think one of the key opportunities in Europe um, is in an area which we developed significantly in Luxembourg, as it aligns with Luxembourg's activities, and that's in the RegTech area. Mm. With the new EU taxonomy on ESG and, and green investing, um, we're seeing a number of interesting startups emerging to provide uh, efficient technologies and tools to enable institutions to comply with that taxonomy. Uh, one that we're quite excited about is a firm called Greenamy that's just arrived in Luxembourg. Um, I've had some interesting discussions with a number of the, uh, the financial services players and uh, sort of looking to enable, help those firms to comply with that taxonomy. Other areas um, we see great opportunities for specifically again in Luxembourg is around the investment fund industry and maybe looking to create indexes or benchmarks that can help us measure impact of investment into uh, various um, green um, initiatives or, or, or to look at how effective our investments are. And I think uh, an interesting company in that area is a company called Util from the UK uh, that are creating uh, metrics around the impact investments or into various different equities and different assets as well, so that we can build those into our financial models and better understand the returns that we're looking, to, we're seeking to gather. Super. So you you clearly have a Luxembourg role as CEO mm. of the loft, but well, you used to travel extensively when when that was permitted. But you certainly have a global view uh, around what is happening, not just in in Europe, uh, but also in the U.S. And you've gone you've gone to Asia. Where do you think we stand in Europe right now? Are we, are we leading the pack? Are we in the middle? Could we learn from other, other countries or other firms out there? Just what's your view on, on all of this? Yeah, I, I think given the situation in many guises, be it sort of increasing regulation, but also Brexit has a part to play in this in that a lot of fintech has come out of the UK. Um, we're a little slower in this area of developing technologies around ESG. I think there's some very interesting things coming out of the US with some clever business models that I hope will be adopted in Europe as well in the years to come. Um, you know, there's, there's firms like uh, Carbon Zero that provide um, credit cards where every $10 you spend, they basically enables them to take a car off the road. So to reduce carbon emissions and for you as an individual to measure your carbon footprint as a result. There are robo-advisors such as Treen and um, Carbon Collective that enable you to create portfolios of low emission investments um, if that's where you're looking to put your money and to also, again, measure the, um, the impact that you're having. Um, we also have an, a neobank in the US called Atmos um, that through creating deposits and giving you actually quite a nice and attractive return of about 0.5% on your savings, 
is taking your deposits and investing those in, cli in um, climate offset, um, and, but also all backed and obviously insured um, via the US regulators. So there's some very interesting business models coming out in the US, and I hope a lot of those will start developing at the front office level within Europe as well. Um, a lot of these fintechs, do they operate as a standalone or do they operate clearly along with the existing financial players like banks or, or funds? Um, yeah, in, in the US, we're seeing a lot of them operating in the B2C markets, so direct to customers, so arguably competing against institutions. Um, it's, it's just a, an age old thing that the B2B market is not quite as sexy and never makes the headlines, right? So, but as I said, in Europe, I think the opportunity is also that collaboration effect. I've mentioned two, two startups already. We're also seeing sort of some niche providers in uh, providing new types of uh, investment products as well, which then are being linked to uh, traditional distributors. I mean, one that we think is quite exciting here in Luxembourg is a firm called Ecofolio um, that are basically take, um, taking your money as, as a fund and investing those in sustainable rainforests in Scandinavia um, with actually quite a substantial return. So ESG can pay as well, which is uh, I think something that sometimes gets overlooked. Um, but then that goes hand in hand with wealth management in terms of offering your clients uh, solutions. So, so I, I think um, there are some interesting opportunities, interesting initiatives, um, sometimes not making quite the headlines that the B2C do, um, but uh, you know the collaboration is definitely there and I think we'll continue. And I think you had a key message, which is doing good can be very good business as oh, well. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So um, final question, sure. and be gentle. So what, what is your, what would be your message to the you know, typical traditional financial system like ourselves, banks and other funds? Uh, in terms of working with fintechs in this space? I think uh, it's, it's a more generic message, is that it's better to, to, take, to make one plus one equal three. Leverage your existing capabilities, your connectivity, your economies of scale, your skill set in financial products, and marry that with the um, agility, ingenuity, creativity of startups. Mm. Um, to offer better solutions to the market, to your clients, and, and delight, ultimately, and, and enable this ESG market to go forward. Um, you know, when we talk about, for example, green bonds, which Luxembourg is obviously a leader in, um, you know, there's some hesitancy sometimes for firms to, to issue a green bond, principally because the overarching cost is going to be higher with all the reporting requirements yep. that are there. Now, if you can look to, say, use tokenization, to reduce at least the initial part, the issuance, and maybe set a foundation and a framework to integrate technology for efficient reporting as new tools arrive, you're gonna make that product more attractive and maybe more firms will look to use those tools um, in terms of uh, acquiring capital for their businesses. So I think working together and recognizing each other's benefits um, will ultimately lead to, to a better market and a better industry for all. Super, very positive message. Look, I think that was a whistle-stop tour of the world of fintech, uh, and specifically here in Luxembourg. Thank you very much, uh, Nazir, for, for joining us here on ESG Squared, and thank you for providing the insight. My pleasure, thank you, Nicola.